Greetings friends, and welcome to this edition of Art and Coffee, the video series dedicated to helping you find and forge your own unique voice in the realms of art and visual storytelling. As always, it's yours truly, Gabe Dunstan, and this is what I actually drink my coffee out of most days. Mm. Uh, and today's coffee is the 46 blend from Counterculture Coffee Roasters because it's still my favorite and I don't feel like changing things up anymore. Got a question recently from one of the viewers. Thank you for that. Please keep the questions coming. It helps give me ideas as to what y'all want to know. Uh, the question was regarding perspective. Do I have any good books on perspective? And I do. I do have some good books on perspective that I'd love to recommend for you. The very first book that I learned anything about drawing in perspective was, of course, the same first book for almost every comic artist of my generation. How to Draw the Marvel Way. I gotta tell you, to this day, How to Draw the Marvel Way is what I swear by. It's the number one thing I tell my middle school and elementary school students when they're first starting out. This is the book to start with. Because, in addition to being an excellent primer on how to break down household and uh, actual objects from life into their basic shapes, it's also an excellent introduction on how to do that with people in a very very efficient way. I use the stick figure method to this day. It is also my very first primer on drawing in perspective. It takes place in chapter three and it's very very short and it covers only the very very basics. Nailing down your vanishing lines, knowing more or less where the eye line is, the whole thing is just a handful of pages to give you a very basic idea of how it's done and then how it is applied. Another reason why I still recommend this book, it's cheap. It's been out forever. I got this one for $5. The next book that taught me the next greatest amount on perspective is actually right here in my Scott McCloud collection. It is The Making Comics Book by Scott McCloud. This is probably his best seller. And for my money, this here is 100% uh, required reading for anyone who wants to make comics. And in fact, I'll take that one step further. I would call it required reading for anyone who wants to be a filmmaker. This one and his first one, Understanding Comics. Required reading, highly recommend. In making comics, the number one most groundbreaking thing that absolutely made me open up and change my mind and pay attention is the idea of perspective and backgrounds as world building. It's not just a background, it's not just something that's there for your characters to uh, help them pop and give you just a basic sense of where they are. It is the environment that your characters live in. And this chapter does an excellent job of giving you all the tools you need to put your characters in that perspective. It also briefly shows how to create and use a perspective grid to help you build your environments. Now in this book, there is an appendix at the end of every chapter with further reading and uh, some homework and whatnot, and the appendix on the chapter for world building brought me to the number one book that I definitely want to recommend. And that's this one, Perspective for the Comic Artist by David Chelsea. This book is kind of incredible. What it does is, in comic form, just like Understanding Comics, it goes panel by panel to show you the ins and the outs of making perspective. All the different kind of perspective. There's more than just nailing down your vanishing points and drawing the lines to create your perspective graph. There's also manners of overlapping and overlaying different visual information to help give more depth that way. It also goes into detail about the theory, where to put the horizon, why it does the way that it does, how to make ladder shapes or railroad shapes recede away from you, those horizontal slats, how they get closer and closer together the further away they go, and it gives you a lovely little formula of how to work that out. The number one thing that this book does for me is it opens up all of the theory, all of the geometry, and all of the visual ideas, the rules, that you need to remember about perspective. For instance, I've got a wide angle lens on this camera and I'm fairly close to it. So if I put a hand, say, 
behind my head and I put another hand in front of my head, this one becomes exponentially larger as it comes closer to the lens. The exception to this is what if the camera was further away and I was being viewed through a telephoto lens and I did the same thing, one hand in front of my face and one hand behind me. What would happen is because I'm so far away, the perspective difference between the further hand and the closer hand becomes much less. They look like they're almost the same size. And because it's one of the tricks of perspective, and I learned that trick from this book, from the writer of this book giving that exact example. There's a trick to this book. It is not the sort of book that you draw out of. It does not give you a bunch of examples necessarily and here now you try and draw them. It's not one of those books. This is a book that you read. You get this book and you read it. And by all means, if you'd like to sketch or copy any of his examples in any of his individual panels, go ahead. But that's not what it's for. It's to teach you the theory. It's to teach you the rules. What it's not here to do is to tell you how to set up perspective grids inside of Clip Studio Paint or how to uh, improve your perspectives using Photoshop. It does not give you specific techniques as to how to draw it. It just tells you how the drawings need to be accomplished from a very broad strokes perspective. It does, however, have in the back of the book a series of charts. It shows one, how to get a shorthand for perspective using photographs, which is the technique that I absolutely use to this day. And two, it gives you a collection of graphs, a collection of diagrams of perspective, one point, two point, from various different angles. And the idea being that you can take these graphs with some tracing paper or scan them into your computer, as ever you like, and build your environments around those. It also teaches you a very quick way to do that on your own sheet of paper so that you could have your own graphs. And I believe that Clip Studio Paints does have its own functionality to make that happen. But if you read this book, you can go into that functionality much, much better informed and you can make much better decisions about the world building and about the environment that you want to bring to your story. This book came out in 1997 which means it catered to artists during a time when the digital tools that we might take for granted right now weren't widely available. Tablets, Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, all the functionality inside. So instead of focusing on the minute functionality of specific apps, it gives you overall theory that you could take with pencil and paper. So if you're one of those who does not have a tablet, does not want a tablet, does not use a tablet for whatever reason, and you just want to work pencil and paper, this is the way to go. The other cool thing about this book being kind of old is the fact that your public library probably has a copy. I checked just before I turned the camera on. Mine does. It's uh, at a branch that's within driving distance, but if I like, I can go click, click, wait a little while, and it'll come to me. And if you don't feel like borrowing it from a library and you do want it for your own personal library, maybe you're like me, maybe you teach other people, or maybe you just really like holding on to books, you can get yourself a cheap used copy all over the internet. Uh, here's a link of a copy of Thrift Books. It's a little over $10 before shipping, and that's half the cover price. But if you keep looking, you can find even cheaper versions than that. If you'd like to know how I go about making my environments and my perspectives, by all means, please hit the subscribe button, come back to the channel because I will be going over it. My own approach is my own. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for spending this time with me. I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to take care of your friends. And I want you to make art.